Hello, everyone. Welcome to your weekly tech update, the show that explores the newest, coolest, and craziest side of tech available on the interwebs. I am your tech director, Ray McNeil. Coming up on the program today, LG's rollable mobile was very, very close to being a real phone. Adaptive beam headlights have become legal in the U.S. and you will be seeing them soon. Happening in this week's What The, an ocean surfing drone is sending back some wild videos from inside Hurricane Fiona. And of course, we'll wrap up the program with this week's Moment of Joy. All that and a whole lot more coming up on today's edition of your weekly tech update next. U.S. Department of Transportation has given automakers the green light, finally, to install adaptive headlights that shine more light on unoccupied areas, helping protect other motorists from the glare of your beams. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration recently issued a final rule approving adaptive driving beam headlight systems, which are already in use in most of Europe. ADB headlights use automatic beam switching techniques technology and it is so cool. It shuts off certain clusters of LEDs while you're driving, shining less light on occupied areas of the road and more light on unoccupied areas. Most Audis, including the e-tron sportback electric vehicle, have already installed the high-tech beams as an option, but until now they couldn't be used inside of the U.S. Adaptive beam headlights were made street legal in November when President Biden signed the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, which gave Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg until 2024 to approve them. The final rule satisfies that requirement more than a year and a half ahead of schedule. It will go into effect when it's published in the Federal Register within the coming days. In addition to protecting Protecting other drivers' vision, the NHTSA says that the technology keeps pedestrians and bicyclists safer too, and better illuminates animals and objects in the road, helping to prevent crashes. NHTSA says that they prioritize the safety of everyone on our nation's roads, whether they are inside or outside a vehicle. New technologies can help advance that mission. The agency is a Approving the ADB headlights to help improve safety and protect road users. Oh, check out this thing. The world of high-performance electric mountain bikes just keeps getting better and better. As technology advances, what was once perceived as the bleeding edge of tech becomes more common and, as a result, a lot more affordable. While high-end electric mountain bikes like the one we have here are by no means cheap, they at least offer the very best in tech and performance to the casual cash-loaded cyclist. Now, we've talked about Frey e-bikes before. The brand previously entered the Touring e-mountain bike segment with The Runner, retailing for about $2,500. The Runner will surely be more to the liking of the casual rider or serious commuter. That said, Frey has upped its game in the performance sector with the launch of The Beast, its newest full-suspension electric bicycle bicycle that's equipped with some of the flashiest bits and pieces in the market. Driving right into the technical details, the Beast is clearly designed as an all-mountain enduro bike, and its frame geometry clearly shows it. The frame is made out of a combo of carbon fiber and aluminum. More specifically, the front triangle of the frame is made of carbon, while the rear linkage is made of heavier, albeit more impact-resistant aluminum. Additionally, the Beast rocks a mullet configuration, meaning it can get a 29-inch front wheel to run over bumps and obstacles with ease, and a 27.5-inch rear wheel, making it a little bit nimbler when exiting corners at speed. From a performance standpoint, the Beast packs a powerful mid-drive motor. Its uh, peak power output 
has 1,800 watts. The beast is truly aptly named and should make mince meat out of even the steepest climbs, allowing you to save your energy for the exhilarating descent. Powering the motor is a 1,470 watt hour battery that's integrated into the bike's carbon fiber down tube. Frey claims a range of 75 miles on a single charge. However, how steep you climb and how reliant you are on the electric assist could of course change this figure drastically. The Simpsons Hit and Run was an amazing game. It was basically Grand Theft Auto set in the Simpsons universe and enabled you to walk around in an open world Springfield. Well, we're probably not going to get a remake of that game at least anytime soon. Due to licensing issues and all sorts of legal jargon, it's just not going to come to fruition. However, what about our purple-haired, one-eyed bestie Leela, or the endless burping bender, a thousand years in the future? Futurama was a huge hit too, but didn't spawn the same number of games as The Simpsons. There was just one coldly received game for the PlayStation 2 that really nobody remembers. Enter Slurm Team. They're a modding group, meaning they alter existing games through programming to give us experiences like this one. I'm so excited. Futurama Hit and Run completely replicates the gameplay of the OG, but placed in the Futurama universe. The 3D models and characters have been built fully from scratch as though it's an intended expansion pack for the Simpsons hit and run. The Futurama Simpsons crossover that you've been waiting for could be available to play as soon as late August or early September. This is awesome! Oh, just like old times. Let's put on a show! My god, that poor kid! <laughs> Shut up and take my money! and your fragile organs. I'm immortal, baby! I've never seen anything so mind-blowing. Now that's entertaining. Slurm team have been working on Futurama Hit and Run for the past three or so years. We don't have an official release date, but according to the YouTube video's description, the team plans to release the demo around late August or early September. That sounds awesome. For all of us that have been waiting for The Simpsons Hit and Run, Futurama Hit and Run might be the thing to give us a little bit of Matt Groening animated gaming satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs>